So continue our discussion on dissymmetry of lift and particularly the differences between helicopters and gyroplanes. I've got a little story to tell you. I was out in Colorado, it's actually at Leadville, Colorado, and for those of you that are not familiar with Leadville, Colorado, it's actually the highest airport in the United States, 9,900 feet or so, give or take, 100 feet, I guess. And I was out there, uh, I had Greg Griminger, for those of you that know Greg, he was my ground crew, and I was out there attempting to set some altitude records, and break some altitude records with the gyroplane. And the Army does high altitude training at Leadville. And uh, as luck would have it, the days that I was there working on uh, breaking some records, there was a couple crews of, uh, a couple Blackhawks there, and there was probably about eight or ten um, guys that were there doing how to high altitude training. They were all, I don't know, 19, 20, 21, early 20s, maybe at the oldest. The old man in the group, I guess it was their training officer, he looked like he was about, well, I don't know, 30, I guess, you know, old, old guy of about 30 years old. But every day they would come over. I got to be pretty good friends with them, chatting with about helicopters and gyroplanes. And uh, so every day they'd kind of stop by there, so everyone would stop by and say, you know, what, what are you working on today? What are you trying to do? What kind of altitude record are you going for today? And so one day when I was there, there was about eight or ten of them around, I finally decided just to ask them. And I posed this question to them. If we're up here at 15, 16,000 feet, and you guys are in the Blackhawks, and I'm at 15 or 16,000 feet out beside you in a gyroplane, do I have to worry more about retreating blade stall or do you guys have to worry about more about retreating blade stall? That was followed by a long blank stare and finally one guy spoke up and said basically we have no idea. We don't know how the hell that thing flies so <laughs> we're not sure. Okay, so let's attempt to answer that question. So we've already gone over several times the fact that when you go up in altitude in a helicopter that your VNE goes down. The reason the VNE goes down again is because as you go up in altitude you have to increase the angle of attack on the blades because you're in thinner air with a set rotor disc size and, and rotational speed. And when you increase the angle of attack that necessitates an increase in the amount of flapping that has to occur. And as the flapping or teetering increases, the speed at which your retreating blade stall occurs goes down and down and down. That's well known. You should know that quite well by now. Well in the helicopter, I'm sorry, in the gyroplane, think about this. If you remember back when I was telling you the three things that you need to understand well that cause an increase in the amount of teetering uh, on a uh, a rotor system, those three things were one, an increase in airspeed. Increase in airspeed caused an increase in teetering. Number two, an increase in angle of attack <clears throat> of either the rotor disc itself or the individual rotor blades causes an increase in the amount of teetering to occur. And then third, a decrease in rotor RPM causes an increase in the amount of flapping that has to occur for the reasons that we already talked about. All right? Okay, so I'm, I just told you that as in the gyroplane in the last video, at the end of the last video, that as we go up in altitude, what happens in the gyroplane is that the blades speed up, all right? As you go into thinner and thinner air, those blades have to spin faster to support the weight of the gyroplane, and that occurs. So knowing that the blades are increasing in rotational speed, what do you think happens with the amount of teetering? Yeah, it decreases it, it, the amount of dissymmetry of lift because the blades are spinning faster actually uh, goes down and the amount of teetering actually is, is uh, does not increase. So I can toot along at 100 miles an hour uh, at 14, 15,000 feet if I have enough power in the engine to get me up there and get me rocking along at 100 miles an hour. And I don't really have to worry about uh, a retreating blade stall. The V and E on the gyroplane, as you go up in altitude, does not appreciably change. Right? And that's a huge difference between helicopters and gyroplanes. Right? So, so I went through that explanation relatively quickly with them, and they were all impressed that I could actually, if I had the horsepower, I could actually pass them up in a gyroplane when they were in a Blackhawk at high altitude. But uh, anyway, so all right. So getting back to the gyroplanes versus the, the helicopter. 